racing and it's an absolutely electric start for the 42 of Will Bedford. Massive lunge on the inside by Matt Bum on Alistair Camp. Active on the outside. Oh! Oh! oh, oh, oh Deep off! Oh. Straight in the gravel trap. Both cars out. Hello everyone and welcome along to the home of British Motor Racing. We're at Silverstone for the penultimate event of the season in the Miltech Sport Civic Cup. The final triple header of the year as well and it's all condensed into one day. Drivers have already been out qualifying earlier on. Their first race is almost upon us and they've got three exciting 15 minute races to go throughout the course of the afternoon. Championship wise things couldn't really be a lot tighter either. We've got our top three in the championship separated by only four points and they've locked out the top three places on the grid. It's going to be a fascinating uh, opening race, which is, as I said, just a few minutes ago. Andy McEwen down here in the uh, assembly area, actually, before the race. I've got Phil Kinch ready and waiting to join me in the commentary box in a few minutes. Uh, but before I head back over there, let's have a chat, shall we, with a few of our drivers. And where better to start than with the pole sitter, Dan Thackeray, who sits third in the championship, four points off the lead. But Dan, uh, excellent start to your day. You've stuck it on pole position. You've scored some good points already. Got to be happy with that yeah really happy with that i mean it, we've had good test days this year and then for various reasons not quite put it together in quality and it's been really frustrating we had uh, quite a tough weekend at cadwell we had high hopes because I, I love the place and we we just couldn't hook it up couldn't we had a couple of issues with the car never really showed the pace i have done before so we found some issues we had changed them as soon as i went out and testing i was like yeah the car feels good now and and uh, as long as I keep a good lap, I mean, I know it's going to be close. That was the aim, and so I'm happy to be on people on both races. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Gives you a bit of a trap position advantage, but that only counts for so much here at Silverstone, doesn't it? Yeah, it's, it does. No one's going to be getting away at the front in this race. You see the times, uh, there's nothing in it. And uh, yesterday in testing, a couple of us did a bit of a few runs nose to tail, and there's, there's no getting away. So uh, hopefully, as always, convert it off the start line. Max is good at starts as well. Um, so just hope to be P1 by the end of the lap one and then hopefully get my head down. Uh, are you starting to feel the pressure a bit? Obviously last year you were a title contender but perhaps a bit of a dark horse yeah. in the championship race. This year though you've been there all season long and now we're getting down to crunch time. Yeah, I wouldn't say it's pressure. It's much more a bit of frustration sometimes when you don't quite convert the pace you've had into race results. And so it was really important this weekend to start as we mean to go on. It was about time we got back to the sharp end and uh, showed, showed some testing pace in, on when it mattered. Um, but that means for nothing. If we don't convert it today, there's three races and I've got a feeling a lot's going to happen today. So uh, ask me again at the end of the day. <laughs> I'll hold you to that. Dan, thank you very much for having a chat. Best of luck then to our pole sitter. Now alongside him is going to be young Max Edmondson, who I think is getting strapped into the car. I'll see if I can wander around this side and uh, have a little word with the joint championship leader, Max Edmondson. He and Alistair Camp came into the weekend a point apart, uh, but Max has managed to out-qualify him by one place on the grid. And that means, Max, that you now have a share of the championship lead. You feeling good going into this one? Well, yeah, I did a decent qualifying lap. Uh, I think both my laps were pretty consistent, so I think I'm P2 for both races. Um, yeah, I haven't been leading the championship this year, so I'm happy. And of course, you're surrounded by your title rivals as well. Could be a spicy start to this race. What do you think? Yeah, we normally all get pretty good starts, and I know obviously Ali and Dan and everyone around us is pretty clean, clean drivers, so I think that'll be a good race. Looking forward to it. Thank you very much, Max, for having a chat. Let's very quickly then dive down uh, to speak to our third place man on the grid uh, because he is the other of the title contenders. And that, of course, is the former champion, uh, Alistair Camp, who uh, is no stranger to pretty intense conclusions to championships. And Alistair, it's going to be another one of those this year, isn't it? Yeah, it's going to be tight, dude, tight. Uh, and it's tight at the top in qualifying as well. Nothing to choose between you all in the times. You're all at the front. There's some pressure on this one, isn't there? Yeah, it's very close. One of them nature of the circuit, though, isn't it? It's just everyone's always tight, so it's just going to be what it will be. But, yeah, all good. Are you good in for race wins, or are you kind of thinking about the points? I mean, you, you don't really have much choice when you're racing against your title rivals. Yeah, just keep going, man. Anything can... I've, I've been in it long enough now to know that last round, anything can happen. And I've had it a couple of times where anything can happen at the last round, and... It is what it is, but yeah, no, relaxed. Birth of the daughter last this week, yes. so I'm a bit more chilled now, so yeah, all good. 
yeah, huge congratulations from all of us, Alistair, and uh, we'll wish you the best of luck for the race as well. That is Alistair Camp then, who, as I said, has been a part of some absolutely sensational championship deciders uh, over the years in Civic Cup. Right then, let's try and get one more word, shall we? Because we had a new winner in the championship earlier on this season at Cadwell Park, and that was Dave Marshall, who was uh, repping it for the FN2s. I've nearly broken your door there, Dave. I'm so sorry. Um, congratulations on the win. I don't think I've spoken to you since Cadwell Park, and uh, I don't know. Your pacing quality suggests it might not be your last win of the year. What do you think? Uh, I think I think a win's a fair way off the cards. <laughs> um, yeah, there's boys with serious championship goals here, and it's not fair to try and mix it on the front row. I don't think. Uh, obviously, you've got Camp, Edmondson, and Thackeray all up there. So we'll sit back here and see what happens. But it's Silverson. You'd be five wide deep down here, so <laughs> anyone knows, like. Yeah, those best laid plans can very quickly go out the door, can't they? You've got to be so satisfied with your year, though, Dave. A massive step forward in pace from you and from the car as well, I think it's fair to say. Yeah, I mean, to, to look where we started off the year, it's been such a learning curve with no background in, you know, what anyone else has done with the car previous. So it did take us a while to get on the pace. Uh, we struggled with heat so for about four rounds, which is quite annoying. Who knows what it could have been if not, but strong return next year and huge thanks to K Car Sales. Uh, my girlfriend and my mum and dad for support because this is this is the dream really <laughs> living it excellent we'll leave you to it then dave because i think the cars are about to be released uh, out onto the circuit in a moment or two engines starting to fire ahead of our first of the three 15 minute races uh, this weekend as i said all condensed into one day at silverstone so the drivers will very much have that on their mind they've got to make sure uh, that they keep the cars in one piece because there's a very short turnaround uh, between those two races lots of other stories as well up and down the grid we'll cover that during the race but we've got five new drivers on the grid uh, for this weekend. Uh, a couple of returning drivers, people like Louis Hounsel, he was the runner-up in the production class championship last year. Uh, he's making a return to the grid. We've also got double TCR UK champion Lewis Kent giving it a go for the final two rounds as well. It's going to be a fascinating race, storylines up and down the grid and a really tight championship battle at the front. I'm going to make my way over to the commentary box and join Phil for what's set to be an exciting opening race of the day. The voice and data solutions at speeds that are simply out of this world. Choose Maximum Networks. Do you wonder why your competitors' websites appear in Google searches ahead of you? 
Then make a call to the SEO experts warrior and understand how your business can be more visible online. As the official marketing partner of TCR UK, you can now work with a trusted search engine optimization partner to increase web traffic, inquiries and sales. Speak to us for your free audit and quote by visiting warrior.co.uk today. Well, I have uh, sprinted, uh, well, that's slightly uh, overselling what I just did, jogged leisurely over to the commentary box, uh, and I'm now joined by Phil Kinch to talk you through what's going to be a very exciting opening race of the day here at Silverstone. The car's looking splendid out on the grid, uh, and it's a dry but slightly chilly track, and on cold tyres, these Civics can be a little bit lively in the early stages, so I think the action is going to get going right from the first turn. It's a short layout, the Silverstone National Track, but one that is made for producing side-by-side, -side, often three and four wide racing. Uh, a little bit of light rain in the forecast for about midday, but uh, I don't know, I think we might just get away with it. Certainly shouldn't affect our first race of the day. At the very least, the cars released out onto their green flag lap now and led by Dan Thackeray then, who knows that a race win here could put him right into the championship lead. There's a lot of pressure on this opening race. Thackeray is starting from the best position possible. He was about half a tenth in the end, quicker than Max Edmondson, uh, and they fought, therefore share the front row of the grid with Alistair Camp starting third. And Dave Buki, the first of the spoilers in the pack, if you like, the first of the non-title contenders, starting from fourth. Then it's Will Redford with Dave Marshall, who we just spoke to down on the grid. He starts sick the head of Lewis Kent, uh, who is uh, sharing that row of the grid with Chris Nyland, so two new drivers, ones to watch for sure. Then it is Sam Kirkpatrick and Sam Nicolau, the two Sams completing the top ten, ahead of Harvey Caton and Jack Riddell on row number six. Row seven then for Ryan Jenkinson and Tommy Knight. Row eight, Owen Hillman and the returning Louis Housel uh, with Alex Kite and Travis Chapman together on row number nine. Tenth row then, the top 20 completed by Jordan Brennan and Nick Charlie with Anthony Gannon and Jackson White on row 11. Row 12 is where we find Mark Hughes and Simon Welch to complete what is now a 24-car grid because Phil Kinch, one of the big stories to come out of qualifying earlier on, is that we have no Ryan Bensley, the man fourth in the points. He was a bit of a long shot for the title anyway, uh, but realistically doesn't look like he's made it out, unfortunately, for this first race after dramas in qualifying. Uh, that is a big, big shame. It is, yes. Uh, Ryan, like I say, had a, earlier in the day, had a good uh, time at Gadwell where he had a pole position and a race win which closed him up in the championship battle. However, after an incident in qualifying this morning, he's not in race one, however, I'm reliably informed that the team are working on the car and uh, looking to see if they can get it cleared so that he can get out at least for race two or even maybe race three. So, work in progress, uh, news development as we as we go. So, um, we'll have to see if he does make it out again. But as you say, 24 cars. We're on the Silverstone National Track, so it's going to be very close racing, very tight racing. Um, and with three championship uh, contenders at the front, uh, with Thackeray, with May Edmondson and Camp uh, on the first three places, like you say, you've got three people in the mix behind them. You've got uh, Dave Buki, Will Redford, we know he's very racy. Dave Marshall's on a high after his Cadwell uh, win, but we are seemingly missing Alistair Camp from third on the grid. So that's an interesting start before the race has got underway. Where has Alistair Camp gone? He's not there third on the grid, as Phil quite rightly says. The joint championship leader has not appeared on the grid. Now, I think I'm right in saying he's not had a non-finish yet this season, so he can count that as one of his drop scores, but a non-start for Campy uh, is not ideal. We believe he might have pulled up at the back of the grid. We'll try and figure that out in a moment. Maybe he's stopped at some point on the green flag lap and then got going. Drama already then, and we haven't even got our first race of the day underway, but that is all about to change. The green flag has been waved, I believe, at the back of the grid, and so Dan Thackeray and Max Edmondson start from the front row. The race gets underway and off towards Cops Corner. They will run. Do we see Alistair Camp at the back? Yes, we do look with do. the pink yes, highlights on his Pro Alloys Racing Honda. So he has got going, but right from the tail end of the grid. So now a big opportunity for Thackeray and Edmondson to outscore him. They lead the way out of Cops Corner for the first time and heading down towards Maggots and Beckett's. A screech of tyres further back. Alistair Camp, I think, was sort of involved in that. But Thackeray holds the advantage here. Good Will Redford steaming up the inside of Dave Buki. And he goes to third. Dave Marshall. 
Marshall tries to follow him by, but can't quite do it. And there's drama oh. further back. Jack Riddell is off into the gravel trap, just avoids the tyre wall, and he will now skate his way back onto the road. The leaders, though, Phil, head down towards Brooklands, with Thackeray just about still in front. He is, yes, but Edmondson is already trying to see if he can get a move either on the outside and to uh, Brooklands. He's sliding wide, so this is where the cold tyres part plays in, in the opening lap. And you can see already Will Redford, who is an absolute demon on cold tyre starts as he goes wide oh. himself, <laughs> is attacking. Will is definitely up for this one, and uh, he was very, very happy after taking his race win um, earlier in the season, so we know he'll look for more. So, yeah, Will is definitely the one to keep an eye on at the moment as Thackeray is out front. Edmondson tucked in behind. It's line astern with Marshall fourth, Buki in fifth, and then Lewis Kent up to sixth position from ninth on the grid. Yes, mister, I don't think I'm going to win this race. No. Dave Marshall, who's <laughs> a fourth place already and gaining on the race leaders, although he's got Dave Buki, I think, trying to get back up the inside of him now as they head down uh, towards Beckett's corner. Here come the leaders, though, and Edmondson's having a go, nibbling at the rear bumper of Dan Thackeray, almost helping him into the corner, but Thackeray stands his ground, holds on to the lead. Further back, Buki is back up the inside of Dave Marshall, levers him aside, and then the silver car behind the Airy Motorsport car, that is Lewis Kent. So he's up into sixth position now uh, with Chris Nyland in behind. Edmondson's going to have another go for the race lead here down towards Brooklyn's corner. And this is what Dan Thackeray feared. You cannot escape at the front of such a competitive grid here. And that's, a, that's certainly proving in the early stages to be the case. And Lewis Kent taking part Dave Marshall. So he's up to fifth position now. Although Marshall is fighting uh, back through the inside at Loughville on the run to Woodcote. He's got that position back. Lewis is not hanging around while we see Harvey Caton also trying to see if he can get past uh, Chris Nyland for seventh position. It's uh, all frantic at the moment as the tyres and everything comes up to temperature. Max Edmondson is pushing Dan Thackeray on the run into Cops. This has got fireworks written all over it, hasn't it? We know Ma Max Edmondson is not backwards in going forwards. Nope. Dan Thackeray, a good defensive driver, and he remembers that little bit further back in the points. Four points adrift of uh, Alistair Camp and Max Edmondson. So really needs to try and outscore him if he can. Down towards Beckett's they head once again. This is the third lap of the race. And Dan Thackeray getting used now to driving these defensive lines. It's sort of backing Edmondson up slightly into Will Redmond behind and Dave Buki, now that he has shaken off Dave Marshall seems to have good pace as well. Indeed he's keeping up uh, quite well and along with Will Redford Redford's not far behind these two either so if anything seems to happen to either Edmondson or Thackeray as they battle for the lead Buki and Redford are ideally placed as once again we see Lewis Kent trying to go past Dave Marshall on the outside of this time at Brooklands uh, doesn't think it no he's not made that stick Marshall stayed ahead and Harvey Caton now has come into the battle for, as well. Yeah Harvey started 11th he's up into 7th already and looks to have pace on the two cars ahead, tries to get the overlap against Lewis Kent as they exit Luffield, but I don't think that quite worked. That looked like one... Uh, that's Owen Hillman. That was Owen Hillman, wise, thank yep. you. Right, right into the gravel trap, so he manages to keep going. Alistair Camp, by the way, only 21st at the end of the previous lap, so he's not making progress. That suggests to me that there may be a little mechanical issue with the Pro Alloys racing car. Out of Cop's corner, they will scream once again, tyres screeching, and as I say that, I believe that uh, Campy just set the fastest lap of the race, but look at this for the race lead. Around the outside goes Edmondson. This is the closest he's been so far to managing to break through the defences of the race leader, but Thackeray shows him the edge of the road and just hangs on. That's right. Um, we've had, as you say, Alistair setting the fastest lap on the previous uh, lap round. Um, and in which case, again, Edmondson is really stuck to the back of Thackeray's Honda this time as they come into Brooklands. And again, going wide, trying for an outside line. But he's got to be careful. As we said, Redford and Buki are right there with them. Um, although Max is determined to uh, make ground whilst Camp is uh, trying to make his way back through the field. And remembering, it's only the top 15 cars, uh, top 15 drivers, sorry, that score points in each race. So Alistair's got a bit of a fight on his hands. Exactly so. And of course, race two, we have that top 10 reversal yeah. as well. So he's aiming ideally to get into the top 10 mm. and maybe salvage something from his uh, his weekend. Down towards Cops Corner, we head once again then. So you see here some of the, the good battles going on midway through the grid. In amongst them, we have Alistair Camp and... Ryan Bensley. Ryan Bensley did make it out ah. onto the track. He's up to 18th place. We haven't yet seen what state that car's in, but at least, Bill, it's out on track. It is, yes. So a cracking effort, an amazing job done by the Pro Alloys boys to uh, get Ryan back out on circuit and uh, get him into the first race of the day. So he's got a fighting chance of realising what the car's like, what situation he's got to deal with, and try and improve as he goes along in each of the races. Max Edmondson back alongside Thackeray gets a bit of a side draft maybe down the back straight. Can he fully commit to this outside line? 
If you go right round the outside through the left at Brooklyn, you get the inside for the right at Luffield, but Thackeray just too good and just manages to park the car in front of him. But the pressure that Dan Thackeray must be under here is absolutely immense because not only does he have one of his big title rivals virtually pushing him round the Silverstone National Circuit, Phil, mm. but he also knows that if Edmondson comes through, there's a very, very good chance that Redford and Buki will follow him by. As soon as you open the door, everyone's going to come past, so he's got to defend as hard as possible, hold off Edmondson. It's not just, like you say, the championship uh, point situation. It's the on-track situation as well. He's got to keep that track position. What we've also seen is Harvey Caton has managed to get past Lewis Kent. He's up into sixth position now. Alistair Camp, meanwhile, despite having set the fastest lap, still only 21st, caught a glimpse of him. They're Ooh. stuck in the pack, bit of a touch there, maybe, between Thackeray and Edmondson as they went into uh, Brooklyn's corner. And Edmondson's going to be getting a bit frustrated here, I think, Phil. It's hard to tell whether he's quicker than Thackeray or not because the slipstream is what's keeping them nicely bunched together. But Edmondson knows he's got a chance of another race victory here and he knows how significant that could prove to be in the championship. He's not going, I don't think, anyway, to settle for second place here. No, no I don't believe so. No, Max is after wins if he can get them. Uh, as I said at Cadwell, he was extremely over the moon with the fact of getting his first win of the year on track. He's had several attempts that have been uh, taken away from during the season, so he's working really hard to keep himself in the championship fight. And as we've said, with Alistair Camp back down the field in 21st, for him and Thackeray, it's all about taking the advantage and getting as many points as they can. But knowing Max, if he can get a race win, he's going to push for that. But it's also good to see, like we say, Will Redford keeping in there, Dave Buki keeping in there, and you've got Dave Marshall, Harvey Kate, and Lewis Kent in a group behind them. So, running out the top 10, we've got Sam Kirkpatrick, Alex Kite, and Chris Nyland, one of the debut drivers for the weekend. Yeah, doing a really good job is uh, Chris inside the top 10. There goes Campy, now into the top 20, by the way. Uh, he got past Jack Riddell on that lap, who had his dramas on the opening lap of the race as Army Caton nearly has a drama down yep. at uh, Beckett's corner, tried to get to the inside of Dave Marshall, runs wide on the exit, and that, I think, could open the door for Lewis Kent to come through as well. Bit of a squeeze down the back straight. Careful, boys. Uh, Lewis Kent, I think, should be able to get that one done. No, Caton coming back at him, actually, uh, on the inside line. The other silver car is Sam Kirkpatrick, sat behind the, the, the uh, number four in the eighth place. But uh, Harvey Cate manages, for now at least, to hang on to, uh, to that sixth position. Leaders then coming out of Luffield. We're halfway through the opening race of the weekend. It's been as tight as we expected, Phil. Uh, but do I sense maybe now that Dan Thackeray is starting to come into himself? He's just got a bit more of a, a comfort margin over Edmondson than he's had previously. Yeah, Dan's a very wily racer, and he's also been uh, driving very well this year. So he knows how to play the game and to make sure he's getting the best out of the car and the best out of the situation. He's absorbed the pressure. If you think about it, this is a 15-minute race with less than seven minutes to go so he's been putting up with Max Edmondson pushing him all this time and having Redford and Buki in company as well and also the attacks that uh, Edmondson has put in as they've come into uh, Beckett's each time as Dave Marshall goes slightly wide has a moment allows uh, Harvey Caton to close in and Lewis Kent um, they are side by side but again they're pushing hard as we've got uh, I think that Sam Nicolel has gone wide he's come back onto the track and he's in between several of the pro alloys uh, drivers as uh, once again, Lewis Kent now manages to defend from Harvey Caton coming into Brooklands. Pushing hard, Dave Marshall almost seems to have it easy. He's managed to stay in front of these so far, but I don't think this one's far from over either. Oh, if this is your idea of easy, Phil, I would hate <laughs> to see what you think is a hard race for Dave Marshall. He's got Lewis Kent, double TCR UK champion, pushing him along, basically, and cannot, again, really similar situation to Thackeray, can't afford to open the door because they'll all come pouring through as soon as that happens. Down the uh, pit straight ahead, Marshall still in fifth place for now. We've had Jordan Brennan into the pit lane to retire. I think everyone else, though, still running. Camp check, by the way, while well, he was 19th at the end of the previous lap. He is still 19th, I believe, at the end of the next one. So quite clearly, Phil, that car not working as well as it should. It's not, no. Even though he's holding the fastest lap of the race still, he is uh, not making the progress forwards he really needs. So this is all about damage limitation as uh, Lewis Kent tries to take some of the scenery and ends up going wide, allowing uh, Harvey Cason to close in with Sam Kirkpatrick in for company. So Lewis seems to be enjoying himself, but he's definitely showing he's there for the racing and uh, not to be messed about. Oh, well, if he wants racing, how about three wide into Brooklyn? Mm. Because Kirkpatrick looks to the inside, Caton's on the outside and Kent absolutely sends it, chops across in front of the number four car, but Caton is still there to his outside, that gives him the inside line for Luffield corner and that should give him that sixth place again, Lewis though will try and carry the momentum off the turn, no can't quite do it, so Caton managing to get back through, brilliant battle this between uh, Harvey Caton and Lewis Kent, 
Lewis making his debut in the Civic Cup, but we know a hugely experienced front-wheel drive racer. Came out of the Fiesta Junior racing ranks in the early stages of his career before going on into TCR, and he's back on the inside of Caton again. These two won't leave each other alone. No, they seem quite stuck together during the race, So, uh, but it's good hard racing, it's good close racing, and they're keeping it pretty clean between themselves. Uh, meanwhile, I'm noticing up at the front Ooh. as uh, Lewis goes for an inside move, lots of brake locking and gets through. Uh, Sam Kirkpatrick also trying to see if he can get past Harvey Caton as well. And there's a bit of door banging there and they're not hanging around these three. Um, just noticing that up front, uh, Thackeray's now managed to get himself just under half a second's lead now. So he's got a gap between himself and Edmondson um, as we come to the closing stages. Which is just as well because it means we can focus on what is an absolutely exemplary battle here for now anyway between these three. Lewis Kent uh, in seventh position. Well, well, was seventh. He's now back into sixth, the head of Harvey Caton. And Kirkpatrick comes through with him, I think, now. Sam Kirkpatrick levering aside Harvey Kate and Alex Kite now tries to uh, buy into all of this as well in the number 97 Pro Alloys car. Not quite able to get through. Right, leaders back across the line. And that oh, that's gap side by side. Is that a problem for Thackeray? He seemed a bit slow then across the line. He's hanging on for now, but a slow lap for the race leader. And all of a sudden, with four minutes to go, Edmondson right back with him. That advantage gone. Last lap, he's four, just under half a second ahead. And now Edmondson is back with him and pushing hard again. So it's almost like he maybe he's got his second wind as they come side by side through uh, Maggots into Beckett's again. But again, Thackeray has the defending line. He's been holding that off for the majority of the race. So uh, Edmondson doing everything, although he's got the switch back Ooh. he's trying the cut back in to see if he can stay close seems to be a bit of a gap now as well Buki's dropped behind Redford a little bit um, as they come down to the run into uh, Brooklands and Edmonds is staying close with Thackeray yes he is then oh drama somewhere that's I think Nick that's a Charlie, eh? Nick Charlie yeah. Yeah. he went off in uh, qualifying a couple of times he's got lost uh, towards the closing stages of our opening race but I wonder whether Edmondson deliberately dropped back mm. to look after those front tyres because you really punish that left front in a front wheel drive car that's around it. here it's only a 15 minute race but maybe just took a few laps to cool everything off and then really come back at Edmondson because he set actually Ed uh, uh, Thackeray sorry Edmondson set his personal best lap on the previous lap no one else able to do that at this stage of the race if that is what he did Phil that's a great example of the maturity that was not there it for is. Max Edmondson at the start of the season. It is. He has he has matured and uh, grown as a driver this year and seriously managed to up his game. So if he's being able to put that uh, thinking uh, to the test and, and be able to use that against Thackeray, then it's showing, as you say, he is really thinking about what he's doing yep. as we see Travis Chapman, I uh, think that is, coming off. Yep, it was. And there's yep. Owen Hilbert, one of his teammates, somehow <laughs> finding a gap between uh, Tommy Knight and Sam Nicolau. Uh, these three battling over, I think, 11th place, aren't they? At the moment, Chris Nyland would be on the race two pole position. He's in 10th position. The next group of cars behind that group is where you find Bensley and Camp. They are 14th and 15th, respectively, as they both come through from the back of the grid. Lewis Kent here continuing to defend his sixth position from Harvey Caton as they run through Luffield. You can see what I mean here. You're really punishing that left front tyre. That corner goes on and on and on and on and on, and you've got to be so patient on the throttle in a front-wheel drive car which Lewis Kent knows very well. Two laps to go then, I reckon. Yeah, two laps to go. Yep. And Dan Thackeray still hanging on. He is. Uh, noticing on the front of the uh, Lewis's, Lewis Kent's car that his bonnet is also flapping slightly. So obviously where there's been a small amount of contact in the uh, fun he's been having battling with Harvey Kate and Dave Marsh, if you can call it fun, uh, during the race. It's obviously had a bit of effect, but it's not slowing him down. So he's pushing just as hard, although it's allowed Marshall to get a gap ahead and uh, see if he can go there. Although, yep, yeah, there we go. Once again, Lewis and Harvey swapping places is uh, through Maggots and Beckett's is almost becoming a, a daily thing with the laps. It is, isn't it? We're going to have one more lap to go at the end of this one. Maybe that's the best place for uh, Caton to be in now so that he can challenge again on the final tour. Down towards Brooklyn's they will go once again then. Just over a lap remaining. And Lewis Kent has definitely enjoyed, I reckon, his debut in the Miltec Sports Civic Cup. But is he going to uh, be finishing in sixth or seventh by the flag? Well, no, in another... 70 seconds or so because they're running out of Luffield now to begin the final lap at the head of the field meanwhile what is that lead gap well it was four tenths of a second I'd say it's something similar actually as they come through to start the final lap the real battle is actually the one for third isn't it oh as uh, Nick Charlie is off again or perhaps is still in the process of finding his way back onto the track after his last misdemeanor I'm not so sure but uh, anyway he gets going hopefully no need for yellow flags on this final tour because as I said that third place battle really starting now to burst into life Will Redford's got some defending to do to try and keep uh, Dave Buki at bay Buki looks from the outside on the way to Brooklyn to try and cut back to the late apex get the speed then uh, down the Wellington Strait 
have a go maybe into Brooklyn's corner. At the front though, Dan Thackeray has driven an exemplary defensive race here under immense pressure from Max Edmonds and his championship rival. And Dan Thackeray looks as though he is going to claim the race victory. This will surely go down as a drop score for Alistair Camp. So we'll have to wait and see what all of this means for the points. We'll update you uh, before our second race later on in the day, that's for sure. But for now, it is. Well, there is Camp actually at the inside of Tommy Knight. That's for 11th place. So he's going to miss out on the reverse grid pole position, I think, by just the one spot. That's a big, big shame for Alistair Camp, especially because his two title rivals finish first and second. Thackeray, the winner, Edmondson, second, and Necker neck for third place by 45 thousandths of a second. Will Redford held on to keep Dave Buki behind. Dave Marshall gets a solid fifth place whilst Lewis Kent did fend off uh, Harvey Caton uh, for sixth. And it was Alex Kite, Sam Kirkpatrick and Chris Nyland who completed the top ten with Alistair Camp only 11th. I'm fairly certain that will be a drop score for Alistair. But as I said, we'll let uh, people far smarter than me uh, work out what the points are before race two later on. Well, fantastic stuff then. It is Thackeray the winner. Uh, it is uh, Max Edmondson in second position and Will Redford coming home in third. But let's just confirm for you, shall we, uh, what the results were. Thackeray the winner, Edmondson second with Redford in third position. Then it was Dave Buki, Dave Marshall, Lewis Kent, Harvey Caton, Alex Kite, Sam Kirkpatrick and Chris Nyland to complete the top 10. Alistair Camp 11th after whatever the drama was on the green flag lap that saw him start from the back of the field. Then it was Tommy Knight, Sam Nicolau and Ryan Bensley, a Herculean effort, just get him on the track quite frankly and he finishes in 14th place. Then it was Owen Hillman ahead of Louis Hounsell, Jack Riddell, Ryan Jenkinson, Anthony Gannon and Jackson White to complete the top 20. Simon Welch, Nick Charlier, Mark Hughes were next whilst Travis Chapman and Jordan Brennan were sadly not running at the flag. Right, that is my cue, I think, to head down into the pit lane it to is. have a chat with our podium finishers. I'll leave you in the very capable hands of Phil Kinch to reflect on what was, Phil, a fantastic race, just it like was. we predicted. Yes, it was. Thank you, Randy. I'll let you go and uh, run down to uh, speak to the podium finishers. As we were saying, a fantastic opening race of the day, uh, three races today, so uh, very, very close uh, at the front of the field. Obviously, we've had the drama to begin with, with Alistair Camp not taking up his uh, grid position at the start of the race, so he's had to work from the back. And as we can see, uh, the driver's pulling into pit lane. Any minute now, you'll see uh, Andy appear and he'll be speaking to them. Um, this also helps, obviously, the Dan Thackeray and uh, Max Edmondson, as far as the championships are concerned. They've scored really well uh, ahead of camp, so the uh, championship standings will stay and change on this place. It's seeing uh, congratulations between Max and Dan, and obviously they've had quite a good long race together, so they're enjoying uh, having a check on that. Will Redford popping in just to uh, congratulate the pair of them as well. Will is also the uh, top driver for the Paul Winfield Trophy. So that's the drivers who haven't uh, taken a race win or a podium in the last two seasons, 2021 and 2022. So congratulations to Will there. And uh, somewhere there you should also see Anthony Gannon, who is our um, Goodyear Diamond Trophy. So we'll uh, pass down to Andy, who's down there in the pit lane. Andy, over to you. Well, thank you very much, Phil. Fantastic opening race of the weekend, just as we thought it might be. And what a defensive drive that was from Dan Thackeray to somehow fend off Max Edmondson's race-long pressure. He's busy already posing for his winner's photos. So let's see if we can uh, dive bomb in there in a second and have a chat with the man uh, who made his Civic the widest Honda Civic in existence. How did you manage to keep Max behind? Yeah, that, that was... Uh, you can see the sweat. I, it was, I was working hard. I mean, I don't know if there's a big headwind or something. I just couldn't get down the straights. And so Max was getting nice run on me every time and it was causing me to be the last of the late breakers and just fend him off and and it was probably only n near the end when I actually finally shook him off my tail when I could put in a couple of decent laps but it was very hard for and uh, I was determined to hang on to that one. <laughs> so important as well especially with Alistair having a drama I don't know whether you saw what happened yeah, to him there. Know. No I don't know it looked like he had an, something was wrong in the assembly area because I see him signaling in and then I see him come in the pits and uh, it's a shame to be like that because I think us three were looking forward to a good race. Well, us, us lot, but especially us three, you know what it's like. We're always glued together on track in some, some way. So. A big win for the championship, that, isn't there? We haven't yet worked out the points. That'll become a drop for Alistair, but there's no doubt about it. It's helped you. You've just got to do it again now, twice more. And, of course, in the next race, from 10th on the grid. Yeah, that's going to be an interesting one, yeah. And in not long time either. Um, yeah, it was really important because it's been a while since the win, like I said, and the, the disappointing Cadwell round where we had some issues. So it was a perfect way to start. And uh, But, as always, Max is never far behind. Campy will be there again, there's no doubt about that. So you never gain much. You get a win, but you don't gain much. But I'll, I'll take it all, all the day long.
ironically, you'll end up back with Alistair. He finished 11, so he's oh, going to be right behind you again. So there's no shaking him off. Uh, mean. Congratulations, though, Dan. Amazing race. Thank you very much. Yeah, cheers. So Dan Thackeray then victorious in our first race. Where's Max? There he is. He's uh, already having a chat with uh, Will Redford, who finished a very strong third place. Great to have Will uh, back on the uh, podium. Max, if you don't mind, sorry. Very important chat, I'm sure, that we were uh, interrupting there. Uh, second place finish. You'd have loved the win. Of course you would, but you certainly gave it a good go. Yeah, um, I think we had pretty even pace throughout the whole race, but I think he'd make a mistake, then I'd make a mistake, so it sort of levelled it out. But at the start, my pace was really good. I just couldn't get past him. Yeah, you tried a few times. It did look like maybe up into uh, Beckett's was your best chance. You tried the outside at Brooklyn's a few times, but so evenly matched. If Dan doesn't put a foot wrong, there's no real way to make the move, is there? Yeah, and there's not that many places you can actually overtake, so I basically just had to try the same move. Hopefully he would overshoot the corner and that's it, but... Uh, kept it pretty clean he didn't didn't miss his break and so yeah I'm happy with P2. That's good to hear then satisfied with P2 obviously you've got the reverse grid coming up now you'll be starting ninth Dan's going to be just behind you so is Alistair as well he finished 11th in that race so uh, what are your thoughts for that one because those reverse grid races can sometimes make or break a weekend. Yeah I think that's the interesting race for people to watch but uh, I know everyone around me is safe and clean so hopefully we can just get back to the front as quick as possible. Good stuff thank you very much Max second place finish then for Max Edmondson good point scored Will if you don't mind can we just drag you over here for a quick chat as well uh well done mate third place finish you were sort of a part of the fight but then at the end Dave was sort of coming back at you a bit wasn't he yeah we were there or thereabouts with him at the start and then um, we started pulling on him again in the middle of the race catching him right back up and then I started having a bit of an intermittent power issue so out the corners my car was bogging down which is why Dave got so close to taking me at the end um but we held on to third and we got two more races so happy with that yeah, less than half a tenth, I think, between you at the uh, at the line there. But good to have you on the podium. A bit more consistency maybe now starting to come into your driving. Would you agree? Yeah, the, the last two rounds haven't been the greatest. Um, you know, obviously there's a few mechanical issues, but um, part of it is my driving as well. So, you know, I'm hoping we can stay where we are now for the, these next two races and the last two at Brands Hatch. So we'll see what happens. Um, I just want to say a big thank you to Trinity Motors and Cloud Factory for coming on board this weekend and helping me out for, for the end of this year. Good stuff. Thank you very much, Will. Congrats on the podium. Thank you. Well, that was our opening race of the weekend here at Silverstone. We've got two more to come, though. And as the drivers have just been saying, not a long turnaround before that second race, which is the reverse grid race. So we take the top 10 finishes from that one, invert them, and that always guarantees a bit more drama, as if race one wasn't dramatic enough. That is it, though, for our first race of the weekend here at Silverstone. Join us again later on in the day for more action from the Miltech Sport Civic Cup. And we are racing, and it's an absolutely electric start with the 42 of Will Redford. Yeah. Massive lunge on the inside by Matt Buff on Alistair Camp. Active on the outside. Oh! Oh! Deep off! Oh. Straight in the gravel trap. Both cars.